All right, we have another email. It begins, hello, I stumbled upon your book and found it interesting as, as a not seeing much sense in calling himself gay man. One of the reasons is I can totally see myself loving a woman, for example, though I am not really keen on the having sex part. Also, I don't really like the gay community at all. That being said, I'm not a masculine man who loves masculine men either. Not in the exact sense. I cook. I'm awesome at baking cookies. I'm not good at football, soccer that is, or anything. I feel no joy in indulging in any kind of activity that Im involves football, be it playing it, watching it, or anything else. I kick a good deal of ass in foosball, though. In short, I don't display what is called gender-conforming behavior. However, I suppose I am not effeminate either. The friends I express my love of men to are surprised, saying that they won't expect me to be gay. I don't bother to explain I don't think I'm gay because, you know, controversial stuff. Now, that being my position, your book kind, uh, kind of confused me. I'm pretty sure I can't call myself Guerrero because I don't really fit in the definition. With me, the way out was far more simpler, but by no rights do I claim it is more accurate. Taste in relationship is like taste in food, some like vegetables, some like meat. Some carnivores may love mushroom anyway because it is more of a meaty vegetable. Yet some other carnivores may love themselves a dish of cabbage for no apparent reason whatsoever. Some might like tomatoes but not the one particular tomato because they actually like watery tomatoes whereas, whereas this one isn't watery at all. We don't really look for reasons in taste and food beyond the aspect of it being well-cooked, meat, uh, meaty, crunchy, or whatnot. We just love them. I, I see it the same way with sexuality. This is more of a shortcut I have taken and not a general principle on aesthetics I heed. My question to you is, why didn't you endorse the somebody, someone can love anybody approach, but take the route of coining a, a new term which, the way I see it, allows just the same thing? I hope my question isn't an absurd one, and thanks in advance for your time. Well, that's, uh, that's uh, not an absurd question. It's a good question. I have maybe two or three uh, points here. Uh, first of all, when you say that uh, you like to cook, uh, you don't like to do sports, that's not necessarily feminine, okay? Especially if your friends say that they don't expect you to be gay because presumably you're not as effeminate as what uh, people expect gays to be. Uh, gender for me is more of this elusive sort of thing that people have that you can just kind of tell that they're masculine, you can tell that they're feminine. Um, I suppose we can figure out what exactly it is. I, I don't think it's necessarily activities. I mean, I cook clean and do laundry because I'm, you know, uh, there's no woman around to do it. So, and I like to wear clean clothes, eat, and I don't like to live in a pigsty. I don't think that, I don't think the activity alone makes you feminine, so to speak. Um, now, with that said, so going on to your other question, well, hold on, uh, on the question of gender, I, oh, there's my pen, uh, on the issue of gender, I just did a video on sexual flexibility, and I had a nice little chart that explained it, uh, you could be in the middle of it, I mean, who knows, uh, but then that, that, that raises the question of why didn't you endorse the someone can love anybody approach, but you took a route of coining a new term, which the way I see it, allows just the same thing. Well, uh, the reason I did Guerrero is, well, first of all, it's personal. I, I personally would prefer more of a masculine guy than anything else. And one of the reasons that I, I, I think the whole masculine likes masculine category is not available for men is because gay has been associated with effeminacy. And the way to solve it is to distinguish between gay and what I call Guerrero and say, you don't have to be feminine to like other men. Okay, and there's a lot of gay guys who are like, oh, well, but we already knew that. And, but, it, you know, when they're, when they're so effeminate, it doesn't really mean very much from them because all the gay guys you see are feminine. So it's like, okay, so if this gay thing is masculine or it includes masculine men and it's only about uh, the, the gender of the other person or the, the, well, the sex of the other person and gay is anybody, masculine, feminine, but you like other men, then where's all these masculine guys? And I never really got a response for that. And the science is clear that gay men do tend to be feminine. So I thought, hey, let's just look at this new category and, and, and to make a full distinction between gay and, 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 and another way of liking men. 
Now, you're also correct, though, that a lot of what we talk about here in Guerrero suggests a, a broader sexual flexibility, uh, gender-wise, sex-wise, and again, I talk about it in that video. So why didn't I just say anybody, somebody can love anybody? Well, because, uh, again, because I do want to make the distinction between feminine and masculine, um, but also because I, I do think that there, are, that there are going to be some certain categories. So I would say I prefer masculine. I think that that would present me with a person who just off the bat, we have more interests in common. Okay, that, that's always good for a relationship. If you have nothing in common, that might not go too well. So if there's already a couple things, a couple activities that we can do together, uh, outside of sex, then that would be a better relationship. So I would be, I would feel more comfortable around a more masculine guys. But that's not an absolute. I've had, you know, a gay boyfriend who was feminine. Uh, we broke up and it wasn't, it didn't have anything directly to do with his gender. I, you know, could have had girlfriends. I could have uh, done that as well. I, I, I don't think, you know, that I don't think the fact that somebody would be more feminine, I don't think it would negate uh, any sort of relationship, but I, I do have a certain preference. And again, just to reemphasize the point for the millionth time, because I ramble on like a crazy person, the only way that I see that that uh, you, can, you can get to masculine on masculine relationships that I would want is to put it out there, because it's very difficult to... Um, to do so otherwise. It's just been very, very difficult because, again, gays associated with effeminacy and there needs to be something that says that's not quite the whole story. So anyways, I hope that answered some of your questions. If it didn't, be sure to, um, you know, ask me more questions and I'll be sure to ramble. So, uh, you know, 